So today I want to talk a little bit about set complements and subsets. Last time we talked about intersections and unions. So to start out with, let's define what we mean by a complement of a set S where we have a larger set U, okay? So let U be the universal set. And it helps to have an example in mind when we're talking about this. This is a bigger set in which everything lives. So pictorially, we have some big set U and then S, some set that lives inside of it. You may have drawn drawings like this with Venn diagrams before. So, actually let's label S as being the part inside the circle. And let's um, be real clear about this. So if this yellow part is S, then what we mean by the complement, we'll say we call the set denoted S bar, complement of S in the larger set U and this is the set whose elements are everything in U it is not an S. So, pictorially, this green part that I'm shading now, the whole rest of you, anything that's in you that wasn't an S, the green part represents S complement or S bar. So let's, let's use an example of a couple stats, okay? So let's suppose we have the set S with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And let's suppose we have a second set T that we'll work with in a moment, whose elements are 1, 3, 5, 7. So they're a set of odd numbers. And then we'll let U be the set whose numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 10. Set S bar, the complement of S, is everything that's in U that's not in S. So for instance, what, the easiest way to do this is to look at U and just consider which elements have, have or haven't been um, included. So 1 is in S, 2 or is in S, 3 is in S, 4 is an S, 5 is an S. These elements that I have not circled, underlined yet, the ones that I'm boldly underlining, become the elements of S complement. Similarly, if we think of T bar, let's use a new color, list off the T elements. Well, the one was, the one was in U, the 3 in U was in T, and the 5, and the 7. What elements are left? Well, we have element 2, element 4, element 6, and element 10. Now to kind of take this beyond where we were at before, notice something interesting. If we intersect, S and T complement, what do we get? Well, the only elements that they have in common are 6 and 10. Now, if we take the union of S complement and T complement, we get the set of all the elements between the two. 2, 4, 6, 7, 10. Now, here's the interesting thing I want you to notice. If we take the union of S and T, so we take all the elements that are in S and in T, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as well as 7, 
And if we now take the complement of this set S union T, so take the parts of this new set S union T, and we're going to look for the parts here that are not, that are in U, not in this set above. What do we get? Well, we get only 6 and 10. So notice when we intersect the complements of two sets, what we get out is the complement of the unit. Another thing that's worth noting is that because the set S is and its complement share nothing in common, we know that the S intersect its complement is the empty set because they have no elements in common. And also notice that if I take S and I take its union with its complement, so I write down all the elements in S, and then also the elements in S complement, I get everything in my universal set. And these facts are always true. So it doesn't matter what S is, we're going to have these two problems.